Good morning everyone, or should I say bonjour. We are here in France. We're actually in a region called Brittany. Yesterday we braved a pretty rough sea to get the ferry from Plymouth over to Roscoff here in Brittany. Yeah, it was a choppy one, but we had a cabin so it was fine. Made it here in one piece and we weren't sick. <laughs> next six months or so we're going to be traveling down as far south as we can in Europe before turning around and heading back up to the UK. It feels good to be starting a big adventure it's really exciting. I'm loving France already. I am very keen to get a baguette and a coffee. This morning we have come to Hjolgot and Hjolgot is a small town here in France but it is also the name of the forest that surrounds it. We didn't come for the town, we actually came because of the forest. But the town is so beautiful. There's this amazing lake, and this morning it's been really misty. But the mist has started to lift, and we've revealed these incredible blue skies behind, and it is so nice. I just feel like we are on the right direction for finding our sunshine. We got here yesterday, and we're already just loving being somewhere new, feeling that sense of adventure again, and hearing a different language, different shops, everything's different and that's what we love about travelling and it's so good to get back out into Europe. Oh my good god. What? I crashed it and it didn't fall. I hit a tree, it managed to like not crash, which I don't really know how, um, and then underneath me was water, so that would have been completely written off. Well done little drone. Already loving being in France and the fact that it's so welcoming to camp fans. We've already just got a nice place to stay where we're allowed to be. There's a sign and there's even services. France, thank you! We found the high street, we found a boulangerie and hopefully we can get a couple of coffees to go to. I have done almost three weeks tomorrow, absolutely no coffee, I've gone completely cold turkey. Uh, do espresso? Sur place? Okay. But I can't resist an espresso in France. I'm sure there's many more to come on this trip and I bet I'm going to be buzzing after this. Cheers to three weeks no caffeine. What a way to start the day. Uh, France is such a vibe, I absolutely love it. But this town is not actually the reason we came here. We came here because of its woodland. So Brittany has lots of ties with the UK. The name Brittany actually comes from the same root as Britain. Uh, it was the Britons who settled here. When the Anglo-Saxons, the modern day English, arrived into the UK, they pushed the Britons, who were the native people, off to the edges. But some of those people actually left and they settled here in Brittany. The landscape here in Hjolgot is absolutely crazy. It has all these enormous granite boulders everywhere. They're like pebbles, but just huge. You feel tiny. You feel like you've been shrunk down like a borrower and you're walking on like a gravel path. It's crazy. It's such an unusual landscape. We've just come across a sign that I think means the Devil's Grotto. Let's go and take a closer look. <laughs> Oh, don't look down, guys, don't look down. Wow. wow. We've only come about 20 meters outside of the town and already we've discovered the Devil's Cave. It's easy to see how this forest could become so entwined with so many of the local myths and legends here.
A little further on through the woods and we arrive at Arthur's Grotto. Uh, once riding through these woods and he found refuge in this cave and slept in here with his Knights of the Round Table. This is such a nice walk through the forest and it's easy to imagine the Knights of the Round Table galloping around. Ah, oh, this is the perfect start to our big multi-month adventure. Our final stop on this walk is the Camp de Arta, and that is King Arthur's camp. I found myself a little throne. <sighs> what an incredible place this is. There's all the natural beauty with the history and myths and legend all intertwined. What do you think of my new shades? We've just taken a minute to sit in this little enclosure on the hill and I'm just thinking how much I love that the van takes us to all these new nature spots and I feel so lucky that it's like our little garden that we can go and explore and we can change that every single day. Just listening to like woodpeckers, so many little birds, it really feels like spring here. Tom's found himself a little DIY fan. <laughs> You're getting yourself a blowout. <laughs> Uh, Brittany is best known for its coastline, but if you fancy venturing off and into the heart of Brittany, I can't recommend this place enough. It is so incredibly beautiful. What an amazing first stop on our trip. I'm really loving our van now. We've had a few upgrades to it. It's just looking so... It's got the je ne sais quoi now. Let me show you around the new addition to the van. We have finally replaced the mirror that smashed when we were in Norway. We've got a new rug, we've got a new water tank, and we haven't got too much clutter going on here. I'm loving it in here. We've driven down to the south coast of Brittany. We've let it get to four o'clock, and we haven't eaten anything except about half a baguette we had earlier. I'm just so happy that it's sunny. I'm so, yeah. I can't believe it. We have to show you this place. We have managed to park literally about 10 meters from the beach. And it is gorgeous. Stand in my toes. It feels good. We've got a little platter here going on. We've got some fresh salady bits. Picnic, my favourite meal. Picnic is your favourite yeah. meal. Yeah. Is it? Yeah, it is. I love it. My little brother George bought us a beer to take with us to Brittany. We're going to have it now on the beach to celebrate the start of this trip. Thank you, George. Salud. So I overestimated a little bit. It's not as hot as I thought it was going to be. It's quite windy. <laughs> I'm quite cold in my dress, but it's so nice to be on the beach and have some sunshine on our faces. I can't express how much better being in the van feels when it's sunnier. I honestly love this van. I feel like I could sit in it and just like every little corner and just admire little bits of it. And it's it's a bodge job. It's our own little thing that we made and that's why we love it, but I just love it. For dinner, I've bought us one of these veg boxes. So I think I'm just gonna make like a stew, vegetable stew, chop it all up and then stew. Ow, those onions are killing me. Well, my stew's come together nicely. I'm quite pleased with that little packet for about two euro fifty. And we've got a dinner tonight and with some bread dipped in, butter. I heard you snoring, but you're not asleep. No, just practicing. Isabel is really keen to go swimming, but it's just, I've just woken up. I don't feel like ready to be jumping in cold water yet. I want to start the day off right, you know. <laughs> <gasps> Windy. Ah! Oh boy! <laughs> I guess I just gotta do it.
So we are at the Karnak alignment and this site is characterized by these stones, these standing stones that have been placed here uh, in rows and they stretch on for kilometers and no one quite knows why they did it, what they're for. These arrangements of stones may have been a way of communicating with extraterrestrial beings. Well, there's just thousands, there are 3,000 stones, standing stones at this site, and they're from the Neolithic period. They're thousands of years old. This is the biggest one in Europe, and it's literally four kilometers of these lines of prehistoric stones. There is this site that is clearly a, a very ancient, special site, and at some point, someone decided to build a house smack bang in the middle of it. Whoever decided to do that was messing with some serious energies. <laughs> They're either going to have a great time in that house or a very, very bad one. <laughs> Check out how big these stones are here. And you have to bear in mind that all of these have been put in place without any modern machinery. The amount of effort, there are 3,000 of these stones. It's just insane. You know how you have tree bathing. I think we should start stone bathing. Prehistoric stone. This whole village is made up of these medieval timber frame buildings and it's built in the middle of this like bow of the river. It's really, really beautiful, but also really quiet. I think in summer this place will be heaving, but because we're out of season, it's basically we've got the place to ourselves. These are what you get if you order a long coffee. Mm. Oh, ooh la la, <laughs> sacre bleu. Unfortunately, my French is limited. Uh, I can order coffee and say thank you and please, but I've just learned, push payer par carte s'il vous plaît. Can I pay by car, please? This village actually has a bit of a claim to fame because after the American Revolution, Benjamin Franklin came over to France to come and meet the French king at the time, and he landed here. Very nice stop. Uh, yeah. for a coffee, a little wander around the town. We are now gonna head towards the Breton border. It's five euros here for overnight parking, which isn't bad. Who can guess which European flag I'm dressed as today? <laughs> it might help if I do this. This is actually adorable, this place. This is so sweet. I love that. Definitely noticing that we are here right at the end of the winter season. Um, lots of places aren't opening till April, so many of these cafes and restaurants are just empty. Um, it's completely deserted in this town, actually. This town has really, really given me something. It's so... What I love about this town is every house has got its own little unique touch and that you might miss if you're walking past in a rush, but there's little sculptures in the window, there's bits that are carved into the houses, there's lots of gorgeous memorabilia outside the houses. Everything's just like in this beautiful collection. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> it's nice to be in the square, isn't it? We've got the afternoon sun. It's actually five o'clock and it's still so lovely and warm and sunny. Just sat in this beautiful square. We've ordered a bottle of cider to share. Do you think they drink it like in Galicia? They have a little bit. No, because this is sparkling. The leafy one was flat. Oh, baby. Yakit Mab. Yakit Mab. Mmm. Mm. That's, ooh, that's, oh, that's nice. Really nice. It's like farmy tasty, but with a bit of sweetness. Yeah, it's not too sweet. It's got that slightly, like, um, yeah, almost vinegary flavour. Oh, that's really good. Really refreshing. Really nice. I'm just thinking about how much nicer it is having a longer day when you live in a van. It just makes you be able to do so much more and you're less claustrophobic and confined and on top of each other. Like, 
those last few months of doing van life, we've literally been going into the van, shutting the door, staying, settling in for the night at four o'clock. We went out into this village at four, and now it's six, the sun's still out, I can still sit out. Ah. So we thought we'd make the most of being somewhere where we're actually allowed to be, because we paid for the parking for the night, this is an area for camper vans. And we thought we'd make the most of the long evening, so we're gonna get our table out and make it a little proper camp out here and have dinner outside, Our fresco. We were back home in Cornwall for about three weeks, and during that time, I actually felt a bit low. Um, I think there was a few things about being on the road that I really missed, obviously traveling and stuff, but also the sort of routine and I get quite a lot of satisfaction from creating the videos as well. Mm. Yeah, me too. Uh, I think without that, I just felt a bit lost while we were at home. Also, the other thing is being like outdoors so much. We have to um, put up our insect fly thing. net, see? I was literally just thinking the same thing. We bought this mozzie net on Amazon and then if you buy them for a van, they're so expensive. But we just got this one for a house and it just so happens to fit perfectly. So I've just got Velcro along the sides. Looks good. And it also gives us a bit of privacy when we've got our door open. Guys, I've got to just tell you how much joy it brings me. Every time I open up this back, I'm filled with joy at the duck air colour that I painted last week. Oh my God, get over yourself. Look, Isabel. <laughs> I do stuff on this one all the time and then you've done one thing, you paint this size and it's all so you've found on about is that. I'm not going to lie, like, I'm playing my own trumpet, I don't care, but it looks so good. Every time I look at it, I'm like, yeah. Oh yeah, the sliding door. Great. I'm not, I'm not poo-pooing you, the I'm just sli wooing me. No, I did more jobs than that. What did you do? I fixed, you gave me a big long list. You gave me a massive list of things <laughs> I had to do. So I did all of them. What have you done then? I can't remember now. <laughs> yeah, just sitting back here admiring my duck egg. You are a beauty. Why are you filming me? <laughs> this should never be seen. This is camera making equipment. I know. This is vlogging equipment. I know. It spoils the romance magic. Romance. <laughs> There's no romance in this video. <laughs> this is my European sim and like an advert. Yeah. So welcome to how to install my <laughs> European sim. Take your my European sim. And then 25 euros of that was, oh, how much was it? Why check? is, try not to get so like number oriented. It was 25 pound, 10 pound of that sim. Let me just, you give me the number and I'll work with it. <laughs> so boring. Ah! Guys. I forgot how good van life is when it's sunny. You're ruining, you're ruining it, you're ruining the video. I forgot how good van life is when it's sunny. Just it's just that. so... Well, was I listening? No. Vegetable stew, vegetable stew. Don't you like your social vegetable stew? Salt and pepper for me, boy. 